Hello and welcome to the second video in this beginner series for Cocos 2D creating a tile puzzle game. So in this video we're going to have a look at the resources that we're going to need for our program. So by resources I mean basically the images that we're going to use. I've created a folder called resources and it doesn't matter where this folder is, you can put it wherever you want as long as you remember where it is. Um, and I'll make available for download all of these images. And inside this resources here, I've got so the board, for example, PNGs, the buttons, and all of the tiles that make up the game itself. And for each image, I've got two versions. One is a normal version, so with the name tile1.png. And here we have tile1-hd.png. So if we're using a retina display device, this tells Cocos, TD, Cocos 2D to, when it sees a dash HD, it tells Cocos 2D to use that version, the high definition version of the image rather than the normal version of the image without you having to type any extra special code in the program itself. All well and good. But we could actually just load all of these images individually or put them as resources individually into our program. But that's going to make the program very, very inefficient because, and I'll open this program to text to demonstrate this images aren't always stored very efficiently in programs so for example if I import easybutton.png now and this is I think 150 wide by 49 pixels high and I'll just reduce this to 256 by 256 and the reason I'm doing this and I'll zoom in a little bit is because I want to show about how when you store an image and then call an image when your program runs or when it loads the images when it runs how much memory it uses to store them basically images are stored in what's called powers of 2 so starting at 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256 and always a square which means because this is 149 wide the next power of 2 available is 256 so the image would be lo loaded in the memory on 256, 256 by 256 pixels of space even though the image is only this big so on the computer itself it would look or in the program itself it would be occupying all this memory rather including the transparent area rather than just the size that it's occupying so a much better way to get around this is to create what's called a sprite sheet which is what we're going to do now with this program and as I've said will be available for download in case you don't have this program. Now I'm going to increase the dimensions of this to 2048 by 2048 and zoom out a little bit because I know from beforehand that that's already the uh, size that we require. There we go, I've zoomed out a little bit enough now. And now I'm going to import all of the images apart from the board because they won't be on the that won't be on the sprite sheet into the program. Next thing I'm going to do is uncheck trimmed and then I'm going to click layout. The reason I've unchecked trimmed is because I don't want it to trim off any transparent space in the images. Oh, it's very important, particularly with the tiles obviously, they remain exactly the same size that I've set them to. And now you can see that the program is actually pretty cleverly laid out as efficiently as it can all of these images in a 2048 by 2048 space. Now when you think back that just one of these small buttons down the bottom here, reset easy and hard, were going to occupy a 256 by 256 on their own, you can already see that the memory saving is enormous by doing a sprite sheet. So the next thing we need to do is actually publish and be able to use our sprite sheet. So I'll call this tile sprite sheet and try and get the capitals in the right order and save that this will then be stored as a PNG and the other thing I'm going to do is select a Cocos 2D P list or property lost list sorry and I'm going to save that as well that's the publish settings done now we need to do is click publish there's a little bit of whirring and we should have inside our resources folder a PNG and the property list so if I open up the uh, property list, we can see what the program has created is a dictionary. It's created a dictionary here with frames, and each of these frames is named after the respective PNG. And importantly, inside the detail of each one are the coordinates of where this PNG 
is located in the sprite sheet and the size of the PNG. So Cocos 2D can use this information from this dictionary to take the sprite sheet, which I'll now open in preview, and I need to zoom that out a little bit and move into the center. Hang on a tick. So Cocos 2D can use this um, property list now to actually locate the coordinates for cutting out the respective PNG that it might need, for example, this one, and then using it in the program. And it only needs to load this image then when the program loads once, rather than loading a load of images separately with far too much memory being used. And the other thing, of course, is if you know anything about OpenGL, it reduces massively the number of bind calls that OpenGL needs to make, which also makes the performance of your program faster. OK, so that's that to the resources then. The only other couple of resources that will be added in are the sound effects, but we'll come to those later. I created these resources using Inkscape, and I've got the SVG file here, so the project file for Inkscape. And if you want that, put a comment, and I'll make that also available for download. Otherwise, that's it for this video. The next video, we'll actually start creating our project in Xcode, adding the resources, and getting on with the game. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.